So section 1.2 is where we're going to answer all of the questions we asked. We're going to learn how to solve a system. We're going to learn how to tell if a system has solutions. We're going to learn to tell um, if a system has one solution or infinitely many solutions. And maybe sort of unintuitively, we'll start with the how to solve part of things. Um, but, but that, I mean, that happens a lot. We, we try to solve a system, and if our process breaks, it means the system didn't have any solutions. Um, so the outline I've given is that we start with a system, we turn it into a matrix, we perform elementary row operations on the matrix until we get a simpler matrix. And then from the simpler matrix, we get the simpler system, a system that we'll be able to solve. And there are two sort of currently two sort of black boxes here. We don't know what steps to perform. And we don't know what it means when we talk about a matrix being simple. So we'll start with the second and define um, row echelon four. And sim there were actually several ways of defining simpler from row echelon form. We'll go to an e something that's even simpler called reduced row echelon form, but one thing at a time. To talk about row echelon form, we need a quick preliminary definition. The leading entry of a row is the first non zero number in that row. Um, so for example, one zero, 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 three, one, four, and then maybe a row of all zeros. This matrix has a leading entry in the first row and a leading entry in the second row. And then the third row has no non-zero numbers, so it has no leading entry. Definition. A matrix is in row echelon form don't ask me why i don't know what echelon uh 
means exactly, I confess, but it's in row echelon form if it satisfies uh, two or three conditions. All rows that are all zero are below any rows with non zero is so as an example this matrix satisfies that condition there's a row that's all zeros and it's down there at the bottom let's say to a all and trees below a leading and three are zero. Again, this matrix satisfies that there are two leading entries and the numbers below the leading entries are always zero. And let's say to B, the leading and tree of every row is to the right of the leading and tree of the row above it. And again, you see, we are uh, we satisfy that condition. This condition says that the leading entry should be going to the right. We start here, we go to the right to find the next leading entry, and then there are no leading entries below it. Um, 2A and 2B are logically equivalent. If you satisfy one of those, you satisfy both of those. So it's really only two conditions. The textbook phrases it as three. There are situations where it will be probably more helpful to think of 2A or to think of 2B. But again, they're the same condition rephrased in different ways. A matrix that is in row echelon form is simple in the sense that we, um, if it's an augmented matrix, we could solve the system by hand. Um, it's, it's still kind of a pain to be honest, but And because it's kind of a, let me make my life easier and not work with such a large matrix.
And the way if you have um this augmented matrix, it's in a row echelon form, and you can solve it by starting at the bottom and working your way up. So what's this last row say? It, it says, well, first of all, it doesn't tell us what the variables are named. Let's use x, y, and z. It says 0x plus 0y plus 3z equals 6. Remember, Those columns represent variables, except the last one, which represents a quality. And now this is, this uh, says, okay, three Z equals six. And that lets us solve for Z. Z equals two. Go up a row. Zero X plus Y plus two Z equals four. Well, we know what Z is. We know that Z is two. So this is telling us that y plus four equals four. And this tells us that y equals zero. And then move up a row. This tells us that one x plus 2y minus z equals 4. But we know what x is and we know what y is. I'm sorry, we know what z is and we know what y is. So x plus y is 0 minus two equals four, x equals six. And our solution then, six comma zero comma two, and by finding the solution, we answered the two other questions we asked. Um, there, a solution does exist. We found it. And there's only one solution. I mean, once we knew that Z had to be two, we knew that Y had to be zero, and then we knew that X had to be six. So it couldn't, there couldn't be an infinite number of solutions. Um, by the time we end this section, um, we'll just be able to, um, to solve systems of linear equations on our calculator and we won't have to do this, you know, solve for the variables one by one thing, but this is a useful intermediate step. It's not where we're trying to end up, but it's on our way there. So let me say, and uh, for some reason, Zoom has a 20 <laughs> slide maximum. Weird, it's not going to run out, but we'll just start again at the beginning and delete as we go. Theorem. 
every matrix is row equivalent to a matrix in row echelon four. The process of finding this row equivalent matrix. is called Gaussian Elimination. The, the Gausses were, were sort of a a dynasty in math and science. Like if you've heard their name in, you know, science, I think there are Gauss gas laws or maybe electricity laws. Um, but anyway, let's present. It looks like we have about time to present Gaussian elimination. And we'll present it via example. So let's take a matrix that is not in row echelon form. And that's, I mean, I guess the Formal way of saying what we're going to do is that we're going to find a row equivalent matrix that is in echelon um, form. In fact, what we say in, in reality is we're going to put this matrix into row echelon form. Um, even though the matrix we end up with is not the matrix we started with. It's just row equivalent. One, if necessary, swap rows so the top left entry is non-zero. And I, I mean, I'm in, in, in practice, um, we're not we're not going to look at matrices like that. Because think of what it would mean to have all zeros. It would say that this x variable is not showing up in any of the equations. Zero x, zero x, zero x. And then what are we doing including it at all? So, I mean, if we were in this situation, we just move, ignore this row. And we'd say we want that to be non-zero, but, but that's not something that's going to occur in practice. And it is necessary here. And there are two ways we can solve it. We could move it, so we could move the second row up, or we could move the third row up. 
that's uh, that's what the first and the third row. Two, three, one, zero. Four, two, one, one. Zero, two, three, negative one. Oh, by a, uh, by a uh, complete coincidence, this, uh, this third thing that we're allowed to do, multiply a row by a constant and add it to another row, is exactly what we're going to do now. Turn all the entries below the top left entry into zero by multiplying top the top row are constants. Talk about that in a moment. And the results to the lower rows. So what are we at? We've gotten this example we're looking at. Two three, one, zero, uh, zero, two, three, negative one, four, two, one, one. So, I mean, what we did was we made sure this was non-zero. We made sure we had a leading entry in the first row, or no, we, we just made that non-zero. And now to be in row echelon form, that two's a leading entry, everything below it has to be zero. Well, good news there, we already have a zero below it, but this four needs to be worked with. So we need to multiply the first row by a constant, and we need to add it to the second row, and that four needs to turn into a zero. So what constant should we be multiplying the first row by? Negative two. Negative two. Because to wind up with a zero, we need a negative four. And to turn this two into a negative four, we multiply by negative two. Negative four, negative six, negative two, 
zero. And we now have our new second row. First row not changed. Second row zero, negative four, negative one, positive one. Third row not changed. And if we had a non-zero entry in that third row, we now repeat this step a second time, but we don't, so we're done. And now we're done with, let me use something else. We are done with the first row, and this column is now all zeros, so we're done with that. And now we repeat ourselves. We look at the upper left entry. If this is a zero, we swap in a lower row to make it not be zero. That is not necessary in this case. And then we use that to make whatever's below it, in this case, this two, turn to zero. So uh, it's kind of gross. We get, we're gonna get a fraction, but we're going to have to multiply that second row by one half, right? We need a negative two to cancel out the positive two. So negative one half, one half. And um, let's see, three is six halves. So that's five halves. This is one half. And now this is going to go in. And we'll have two, three, one, zero. Zero, negative four, negative one, one. Uh, zero, zero, five halves, one half. And now we won't keep going. We just keep going down and to the right, but as it happens, we're done. This matrix is in row echelon four. So that's Gaussian elimination. We'll um, spend a few days, maybe a week doing it by hand. Then we'll, we'll say that that's enough of that and we'll learn to just do it quickly on our calculator. It's why you need a TI-84 in this class. Um, so we didn't finish section 1.2, that's fine. Um, we usually go a little slow in the beginning and make time up. So I wasn't really expecting we'd finish it. But the section 1.1 homework is due. Sounds good. And I will see you Tuesday. Oh, perfect. Thank you.